How's it going, Brian? I tell you what, man, I'm I'm losing faith. I'm in losing humanity. faith in humanity. So as you guys may have known, if you've watched the previous episodes, we have a 1985 Honda Civic SI manual car, red, 130,000 odd miles, but I love that car. Every time I get in that car, it just puts a smile on my face. My whole family, we'll go out, we'll take that out to eat, we'll take it to a rest, you know, you name it, we get in that car. And so what do we want to find? We want to find another one. Well, a 91 pops up. EuroAsian Bob found me this 1991 Honda Civic, red with gray interior. So basically it's kind of the bookends. You got the 85 and we're gonna have the 91 SIs. Same color, same interior. Really excited. 50,000 miles, the tub, no rust. A lot of times these cars have rust. So this one was, was supposedly clean. And he knows I'm always looking for cars, but I'm not, I'm not a Bob. I'm not Bureau Asian Bob, man. He's on there all the time. He finds awesome, awesome cars. So he, luckily he shares them with me and other friends that he has. He knows that I've been looking for one of these cars for quite some time. And so I start this conversation with this person that has this car. Everything's going great. It's still for sale. So I'm like, man, at that price. So we negotiate, I call him even during work. I call this kid up and we start talking and we're kind of going back and forth on price. And he comes down a little bit. I'm like, man, I'm there. I'll bring cash. I've got, I want to say it was $8,500 in cash. So that day I went to the bank, pulled $8,500 worth of cash out, shoved it in my wallet, you know, creased my wallet and um, put it in my wallet and called Bob up. I'm like, man, you ready to go? He's like, I'm there. He's like, let's go. He, and lo and behold, that day, I'm not kidding, that day he sells a car up to where this car is for sale. Now, at first I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to fly in. And this person even mentioned that. He's like, well, you're going to be flying out. I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, that's good because I could pick you up at the airport because I work at the airport. I'm like, awesome. So I don't have to get an Uber because it was a little bit away from Milwaukee Airport to where the car was located, probably about 30 or 40 miles. So I'm like, you know what? That would be great. So he's like, no problem. Just let me know. So then I call him back. I'm like, you know what? Actually, I'm going to come up and pick it up. My friend's going to come with me because Bob had just sold a car near there, three and a half, four hours away from where this car was located. So Bob's like, awesome, man. He's like, I'm in. That way we can deliver this Beetle. He had a 65 really cool Beetle that I should have bought from him because it was awesome. So he sells this Beetle that day. He's like, man, I can tell the guy I'll deliver it. So he's like, that guy, the guy, instead of having it loaded on the back of some truck, that way you, we can take it up and do a personal delivery. I can videotape it and videotape it. What am I talking about? What am I, 80? He can film it and you know do the delivery. I'm like, that would be cool. So I come up, pick him up. We load up the Beetle on his aluminum open trailer. And, and Hayes, this is a Friday, so Hayes is out of school, which is awesome because he, more than even myself, he was so excited to get this car. He's like, Dad, Dad, we'll have the next year of car, and we'll, we'll be able to both go out and drive them, and I'll be able to fix this up because it needed just a little bit of work, some engine work, but valve cover, all that kind of stuff. So he was excited. That was right up his abilities at being at 13. So he was excited. So we go pick Bob up. We deliver the Beetle. And I'm in contact with this kid in uh, Milwaukee and we leave the place. I'm like, hey, we're on our way. We're four hours away. He said, OK. He texts me back. He's like, well, hey, actually, I have work from one to nine. I'm like, OK, no problem. Uh, you know, we'll get something to eat because we were hungry by this time anyway. I text him about, oh, about an hour to where we're going to meet up after nine. He's like, you still want to do this tonight, right? And I said, yes, because I, we, I text him, I'm texting here. And I'm like, yeah, because we want to get back on the road and get a few hours. You know, we'll drive till one, two in the morning on the way back. The weird thing is, so I had the address of where this car, an address for this car. But lo and behold, I text him to where we want to meet at and nothing. And granted, I know he probably has a job where he can't, working at the airport where he can't text or get on the phone. So I'm not getting anything. So I'm like, well, I know the relative location where this car is. So we head up that direction and I still don't get any text. So pretty soon it's, you know, oh, getting close to nine, nine o'clock, nine oh five rolls around, nothing. So I call him and he's not taking my calls. And Bob's like, mm, this is a bad sign, but I'm like, Bob, it's okay. This guy, this kid knows we've driven 11 hours to pick this car up and I, he knows I have the cash and we're going to buy this car. And he knows I'm you know, coming with a trailer. And he's just like, I've been in these situations. I'm like, don't jinx it, Bob. Don't jinx it. Pull up out front. Boom. There's this apartment complex of about, I think there's about four or five condos in this place. So we're at the right place. It's well lit. And now I can see the other cars out on the road 
that he had for sale. So I'm like, I know we're in the right spot. So we pull this car, the truck and the trailer forward and we're right in front of his driveway. And so we're sitting there now it's about 9.20. So I'm like, well, I know he's off of work. So we're sitting there and sure enough, I see a car coming up behind us and it pulls in the drive and it pulls in and kind of goes down the long drive. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's gotta be him. But there's other people that live in this complex. So we're waiting, waiting. So finally, like, you know what, I'll get out of the truck and uh, start walking up to, you know, and meet him as he's walking out. Cause he sees us, obviously if that's him, he's going to be coming out. So I get out of the truck and I'm standing there and all of a sudden the Honda or whatever car, I think it was a Honda, not this Honda, but pulls out and he pulls in front kind of fast, kind of whoop, comes around. He pulls in front of this black Audi and he jumps out the driver's, the driver's um, um, door and he opens up, tries to check the door to make sure the doors on this Audi are locked. And I'm, and I'm like, well, that's him. So I'm, like, I'm yelling, John, John, you know, and he glances over at me. So he knows it's me, jumps back in his car and boom, guns it and takes off. So guys, this car buy is a bust. I am, to say I'm ticked off is, oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not too happy right now because we are here. We drove many, many hours. I don't even want to say how many hours to buy this car and this guy is nowhere to be found. I had communication with him all the way up to about an hour and a half, two hours ago, and now completely silenced me, completely ghosted me, and can't contact him. Bob can't even contact him. We've tried multiple ways, and he literally, we were parked here. He showed up down the side of the road, got out of his car, saw that it was us, and took off and left. <sighs> I don't even know what to think. So, you know, Bob came up with me, Hayes came up with me. Um, and so now we have a long journey back to Kansas with no car in an empty trail, unless Bob finds something. So Bob, you may be, you may be the shining star and you might be able to find something, but I'm going home empty handed, which really, really sucks, but that's the way it goes. So I've learned my lesson. So we are out of here. And Bob's like, yep. Yeah. He's like, Dude, there's no sense in sitting here. The car's gone. I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, Brian, what happened was you guys had a deal and somebody stopped by and offered him more money, more than 8,500 bucks. He's like probably a hundred dollars more. And the kid took it and boom, car's gone. Well, we sat there for two hours trying to get a hold. And pretty soon he's blocking my calls. So Bob's like, Brian, pack it in, man. We drove up here for nothing. At least it would turn into a good trip. You know, Bob has a good sense of humor. Hayes, on the other hand, you know, I was, I was more disappointed for Hayes because he was excited about getting this car. This happens probably uh, more frequently than you'd like to know. I, it's never happened to me. I've bought a lot of cars. Well, look, I've been but, fortunate to buy a lot of cars, but mm -hmm. I've never had somebody like totally lie to me. You're buying a Honda Civic off a kid. Yeah. I mean, this doesn't happen with a Ferrari or Lamborghini purchase. <laughs> that's probably the difference. Huh? Um, that's the way it goes. That's part of the journey. That's part of going on car trips, you know, wheeling and dealing. And of course, you know, we're still on the phone. Bob's on the phone. I'm driving. He's coming across some deals. And now we're like, okay, we're going through Des Moines, Facebook on Des Moines, Craigslist on Des Moines. Nothing showed up there. And we're, and then we're all of a sudden, well, we're going to be going through Kansas city, Kansas city, Craigslist, Kansas city, Facebook, nothing there. And of course, once we went past through Kansas city, you know, I was, I was kind of relieved because we were getting closer to home, but you know, we were both depressed that nothing was on the trailer and you can hear that thing, bum, 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 bum. you know, empty trailers tend to shake themselves and you can hear them the whole time. But so we got home and you know, we, on the bright side, it was so cool meeting this gentleman that we delivered the beetle to. So check out Bob's video of delivering that beetle. That guy, he was so ecstatic and he and his wife, you know, the thoughts on my mind was he and his wife, you know, they had a beetle when he first got married and reliving those memories because he was going to take it out that night and just thinking of them cruising around, relaying memories of when they had a beetle when they first got married was, was the icing on the cake. On to the next one. There's always other cars out there. Things happen for a reason. And um, yeah, that's how it goes.